In this video, I race my friend Cookie the Main in Pet Catchers, and the first to make it to the Atlantis would win a rare secret pet. This video is gonna be like a story, I'll just say, since I didn't record much footage. But enough of me yapping, let's jump right in. I'll show some of Cookie the Main's footage since I appear on his POV multiple times. Anyways, we're starting in Pet Park on alt account, I mean, obviously. Something Cookie did that I didn't was that he used code so he had a little bit of a head start, but not for long. Anyways, we could do everything besides spend Robux. Because let's be honest, if we spent Robux, it'd be pretty unfair. But the competition begins where Cookie shoots directly for the secret button. Um, let's go ahead and do this really quickly. He may not know some of these tactics, even though he does do a couple of new to pro stuff. Let's go ahead. I wish we had the hoverboard super early, but we don't. So here's our items. I was going to go straight to catching, but I said, hey, maybe I should press the button too. The secret chest gives me some coins, so it'll benefit me later on. But now we went ahead and caught some pets because as we all know, you need six pets to get to the Mellow Meadows. But yeah, that's all we did over here in the pet park. So let's now move on to the Mellow Meadows. <laughs> We are now moving into the second area which is the Mellow Meadows. As you can see, I was the first to go over there since I only caught common pets, while Cookie the Main caught, you know, bunnies, which do have a lower catch chance, and I went to catch more in the meadows. Along the way, I thought maybe I should complete the index too, so I tried to do that as well. Now Cookie on the other hand talked to Phony Hawk first, which is a really smart move, because after completing his quest you will get a hoverboard. And as we all know, hoverboards are pretty fast. So now we're here in this area. We're going to go ahead and try and get the hoverboard so we have a faster uh, advantage. So we're just going to do all this nonsense right here. And hopefully we get um, the hoverboard a lot quicker than he does because it is going to be super advantage for us, you know, speed-wise, like I already said. I managed to catch on a little bit later, but now he had a board before I did. All right, guys, we completed our hoverboard quest. He made it to the next area, which is pretty sad, but we still have a better speed advantage, so that's going to help us out a lot. Let's put this in bind one. But hey, I was still ahead in the Auburn Woods, so I'll explain what went down over there. So the Auburn Woods is where I will begin to get a really big lead, or in another stone, but still, I will get a big lead from here. I arrived first again, which gave me another advantage. And just like in the last two zones, I went ahead and started catching pets. And Cookie again is starting the quest line for the blacksmith right away. Again, it was a smart move. However, for the blacksmith's quest, you need to fight slimes. Since he had pets from the Mellow Meadows, it's not that fast to defeat the slimes. And since I had pets from the Auburn Woods, I was able to fight those slimes faster. But I would really start on it like two minutes later. And that time I also completed Phony Hawk's quest and got the board, so that's really cool. I then went to fight the King Slime to get the last bit of coins I needed to go to the Frosty Peaks. And obviously I got enough, but Cookie completed the quest line before I did so he got access to the crafting machine. I didn't use it for the entire challenge so I'm kinda dumb for that one. But from this point on things would really start to pick up. Once more, I arrived in a Frosty Peaks before Cookie, and the first thing I did was complete the small Mayor Blink questline, which you know consists of the Ski Man and that Molten Dude. After I completed that, I could head down to the Brook Quest, but I didn't want to do them since I could progress normally without them. However, I did like three because I needed some loot, and the Brook questline gives some legendary cubes, so I really needed those for later on. But now here's where things start to get interesting see a unicorn spawned in auburn wood so i went ahead to get that and i got it additionally cookie would get a frigidus which spawns a little bit after the unicorn so a frigidus legendary spawn in the area and we have a legendary cube so hopefully we can go ahead and get this pet right here it's gonna be a major help for our team so hopefully we do get it and we got it let's go all right so now we have a pretty insane advantage here but since i had the unicorn on my team that would give me quite the big advantage because the further you progress the better the pets are but besides all that let's move on to sunset shores <laughs> 
Sunset Shorts and Beyond is where I would begin to make a huge lead against Cookie. This would also be the area where I start to hatch mystery eggs. I got a few from the shrine and they are really overpowered, especially if you want to get some epic pets fast. In my situation, I really needed them. But alongside that, I went ahead and caught some more pets because if I caught a certain amount, then you know, I will be able to get a cool prize in the index. But I also wouldn't do any fishing because let's be honest, that would be a waste of time trying to get all the pets for something that's only going to be overpowered up until the magma basin. However, Cookie would actually fish. But just as any normal person would do, I fought the Kraken with my newly found team of epics. This would give me a huge coin advantage, but little did I know, I was going to have a way bigger advantage. Alongside the fact I didn't choose to fish, a Rainbow Shark spawned in Frosty Peaks, which is a tier 2 legendary. If any of us caught that at that time, it would be a really big advantage. But you know, I'm on an alt account, I rarely have anything to catch it with. Cookie looked at it for a little bit, but he passed. Oh wait, a rainbow shock spawned in. Let's see, can we get it? I don't think we have the chance of getting it, but let's go ahead and see where it spawned in. And okay, so yeah, we definitely do not have a chance of getting that, so Mellow Meadows the way it is. However, I believe in miracles and I actually caught it. So a miracle I would receive. So now I have a rainbow shock on my team, which is now my strongest pet. Anyways, though, let's move on to Dusty Dunes. Dusty Dunes was quite a long grind because to get to the next area, I would need 50 million coins. So to start off, I caught more pets to fill up my index. I also went around Dusty Dunes to find some secret chests because they do give some helpful items. Then as you can see, I went ahead and started hatching for some more epics. Cookie would catch on to the whole hatching thing later with me. So now we were both on the same page when it came to hatching. I also played the Ancient Dig minigame as well and we got great resources for later. We got some coin elixirs, lucky elixirs, we got a few respawn homes too so that was really good. But to top it all off for this area, a dual core spawned and both of us caught it. So that was really good going forward. And I believe a fairy would spawn too. But I was low on resources and I really didn't want to catch that. But yeah from here I would get a whole two areas ahead of Cookie. So some stuff, or a lot I should say, appeared on my side but Cookie didn't get to see it so let's move on. This is honestly the easiest area to blaze through since the magma basin is only 100 million coins. On release this used to be like 300 million coins but they nerfed it down to 100 million which is only double the amount I needed to get from the Dusty Dunes to the Grotto. I didn't really play Dance Off much over here because obviously it's a little harder, you gotta press around the buttons, but also because if I mess up three times, I get almost nothing. So I still played the Ancient Dig minigame in Dusty Dunes since I thought it was easier. And you know, all I have to do is just click, click, click. But I did the usual here, catch pets, hatch eggs, an Astral Serpent spawn too, but unfortunately, I didn't get it. However, when Cookie got here later, he didn't get a Astral Serpent. Alright guys, I know I haven't been recording a lot. That's because mainly I've been trying to grind from coins and finding these mobs, but I did just get an Astral Serpent, which is a pretty OP pet and it's actually my, be my best pet now. So now we do one point, about 1.3 damage now per hit. But if I did get the Astral Serpent at that stage, then that would have been great because now we have another Legendary on our team. But other than putting some charms on my legendaries, there's not much else that happened over in Gloomy Grotto. So that leaves me with two more areas left to the Atlantis. Magma Basin took a way longer time to finish than Gloomy Grotto, but the first thing I did was claim the Rune and Cherry Shrine. After that, I pressed the red button to open up the castle, and I claimed a secret chest too. So you know, that gave me some extra loot. Sherlock's quest was pretty easy since I've done it multiple times, and all I had to do was just run around the map and find clues, which again, were easy. But from here, Cookie would start to catch up on me, so I had to go a little faster. I finished her Lockley's quest and immediately I went up to the black market. From the black market I could go into a secret volcano and there's another secret chest inside of there. But here I would say is where I got my last advantage. After this I was not at my luckiest. But a Serpus spawn which is a tier 2 legendary and using my lucky elixirs and 6 legendary cubes. Building up my pity with epic cubes. I caught it. 
Now we use that and some epic pets to blaze through the rest of Magma Basin fighting Molten Crabs. I also tried to make one of my pets shiny at this time, however it did not work. Now the only thing standing in between me and winning the rare secret pet was the... This was it, the Hyperwave Arcade. Since I had a huge lead, this would be quite easy getting to the Atlantis first. But the grind here is an absolute nightmare. To get that Hyper Lounge, I would need 3 million tokens. And to get to the Atlantis, I would need 100 million tokens. So the first thing I do is begin hatching since that's the fastest way I can get epic pets. I would also catch the other two pets in the arcade for index. And having around 1000 eggs and no game passes, I was good for about a few minutes. I hatched a ton of memory errors which was good, but I also would hatch a sealed duo. Now I really hate sealed duos, but for what we're doing now, I'll take it. This would also be the time where Cookie would finally catch up to us. Now that I have some good token pets, I leveled up my arcade pets using wild berries and scrolls, and I also managed to make one of my memory errors shiny. This was before I got the seal duo, however there's just one problem. Not just for me, but for Cookie too. See, we've been playing pet catchers racing to the Atlantis for 4 hours, and I was just getting to the hyper lounge after like 30 minutes. So we had to change the rules around a little. The new rule was that we could get one pet from our main accounts to use and get to the Atlantis. So I grabbed my best pet at the time which was a shiny egg charm. This egg charm has token 5 and deadly 5. And I heard it back to my alt account on Hyperwave Arcade. I also saw that Cookie was thinking the same thing and he also grabbed an egg charm. So the first thing I did with my egg charm was fight the hyper cord, but if you know me, I play Roblox on ancient boulders. So the hypercore broke. My next best option was to play Robot Claw, and that worked out just fine. I managed to get good loot and about 8 million to 10 million tokens. But little did I know those tokens wouldn't matter, because Cookie had already reached the Atlantis. Alright guys, and just like that, we literally have a hundred million tokens we unlock at Lances. That is honestly insane. This challenge took us four hours. This means I had to give up my Princess Pearl. It was hard saying goodbye. We had some fun times. But it was a really fun challenge and I enjoyed doing it. Something he had going into the arcade that I didn't was more golden tickets. So I should have been more resourceful using my tickets early on. But again, this was really fun. Congrats to Cookie. And if you'd like to see a rematch, let me hear in the comments. But until then, I'm out. Peace.